All right, that's better. Good evening, everyone. Hello. My name is Kayla Joshua, and I am a financial services mentor. And the name of my company is Nala Solutions. And I wanted to go live today to talk about how we as a community, especially African Americans, of course, um, can build generational wealth. So that's a topic that's very rarely discussed, but I feel it definitely, oh, excuse me if I'm looking at my phone, I can't see the comments on here on StreamYard. Um, I definitely feel like that's a subject that we need to um, talk about, especially in our community because, my apologies, because it's not spoken of. And I had dropped some statistics on my Facebook page not too long ago. And on the Facebook page, um, it basically stated that um, the average African-American person's net worth is about $24,000. And these statistics are from 2023. And compared to our white counterpart, their average net worth is about 144,000. So why is this such a huge difference? And before I continue and go any further, I would like to introduce you guys to one of my business partners. Her name is Sharita Gibson Green. How you doing tonight, Sharita? I'm good, and you? I'm doing good. Thank you for joining the Knowledge Solutions community. Um, before I get started, just a little bit about Sharita. Um, we became business partners maybe about, I want to say four years ago, four or five years ago when I first got into the tax industry. And when I say I knew absolutely nothing about taxes, absolutely nothing about entrepreneurship, I was like, there's a friendly face. She's smiling. I have some questions. There's somebody I need to ask. So she definitely um, was there to assist me in any way possible in like a lot of relationships, our business, um, our business relationship turned into an actual true friendship, friendship and sistership. So, um, thank you, Sharita, for joining us tonight. You want to yeah. tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm a serial entrepreneur. You guys, uh, literally, um, I have a passion for helping people um, with. Breaking into entrepreneurship, really, um, it's so very important that we know that it's an option that's on the table and that we do not have to be stuck behind the desk working for someone else. There's so many benefits to establishing your own business that can help just, you know, um, level the playing field. It helps us get the head start that we need. And um, there's so much freedom in it. Um, so my business is called design your life and like we that. focus on uh creating lives with purpose um where we do exactly what we want to do and just teaching people that it's all within your choice you decide how you want to live you decide where you want to live you decide everything about your life and many people don't have that as an example so that's what we specialize in um, here over at Design Your Life. And we um, specialize in showing entrepreneurship, uh, I'm sorry, entrepreneurs, how to set up their lives uh, financially the, the correct way. All right. Thank you. And I always, I've been meaning to tell you, I love your business name, like Design Your Life. And you are so, um, you're so correct because I never thought about entrepreneurship ever. Um, for those who don't know a little bit about my story, I was like basically the typical person. They tell you, go to school, get a good education. So I never wanted to be an entrepreneur. I never wanted to go into taxes. My um, upline, as they call it, in network marketing, she's like, oh, you should do taxes. And I was like, oh, hell no. I'm not <laughs> I'm not doing nobody taxes. I don't want to deal with people. I don't want to deal with our people. And they be bugging. Like, they understand no boundaries. And I actually did it. Um, kind of like as a side hustle and it actually turned into a passion because once I realized the lack of financial literacy and knowledge that we had as a community, it was scary, you know, so I kind of feel like my degree in social work, you know, me meeting people where they are and all the years I worked in banking, it kind of went hand in hand. So God was like, okay, here's your job. You don't like numbers. I'm going to make you do numbers for the rest of your life. I was like, oh, great. 
Thank you. <laughs> but um, tonight's episode is about how to build generational work. I mean, excuse me, generational wealth. And I know that you're in an insurance agency industry uh, with PHP as well as myself. And I'm kind of new to the industry. And when I was doing research, it said one of the three top ways to build generational wealth. Number one was real estate. You know, there's all you can buy and make more land. So you can always make more money um, by being in real estate. And the second was investing. You got to take, we have to have money to invest. So how do we get the money? And the third one was life insurance. So what are some of the ways you feel life insurance can help build generational wealth? So life insurance is so very important because it's one of the ways that people often overlook to create a generational wealth. So in life insurance, you absolutely have options that are available to you that allows you to reach all of your financial goals, whether it's a certain amount of money. But if you really think about uh, what life insurance does long term, it affects generations and generations to come. So by um, having a small sacrifice now, you are able to really think about your great grandchildren and keep them in mind. And it helps prevent them from going through financial obstacles that we may all have went through as young adults, as adults. And it just helps them, um, you know, go to get to get to their higher purpose a lot faster. Um, so many people just overlook it because they just don't know. Many people don't have an example in their community or someone they can go to, someone that looks like them, understands their struggles, uh, understand, you know, things that they go through to speak to about life insurance. So many times the example is, you know, someone passes away and they're left with debt you know, burden. And that's not all that life insurance can do for you. So we're here to show you that it is absolutely one of the easiest ways to break into generational wealth and get that ball rolling. Thank you. What I um like about life insurance is the fact that, like you say, it's not the only way. People always think of death and equated with life insurance, like, oh, a peace of mind, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, do you know the guy who owns uh, J Jumpin' Jack Taxes? I can't think of his name. He had a video on Instagram the other day, and he does life insurance as well. And it was so true. He said, especially black people, we don't want to get life insurance. It's like, oh, I have a job. My job insures me. Oh, this and the other. But that's so selfish because you're leaving this debt on other people. Um, my brother-in-law just passed away last week, last Wednesday, 31 years old, no life insurance. So now they're everybody trying to scrap up money to bury him. So because you don't want to see, like my whole thing is you dead, like not to be rude, but you're dead. You don't want to see the next person have something without you. So you choose not to get life insurance and just let people figure it out. Like that's selfish. That's crazy. That's greedy. When the younger you are, when you get life insurance, the cheaper it is. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make, it, it just really doesn't make any sense. I just don't understand where the disconnect is in our community and why it is that way. Um, do you have any answers on why you think it's that way? I don't know. I didn't want to turn to a whole life insurance thing, but seriously, I, I don't know. <laughs> It's, I think it's learned behavior, you yeah. know, um, of course, not having that example growing up, you would never you would have never thought that life insurance was a way to solve many financial problems because we didn't see that as an example. It took us to become adults and to purposely learn this industry to see all the advantages it has financially for um, our lives. So I think that's one is learned behavior. People will duplicate what their parents or grandparents as far as financial habits are. You're going to duplicate that. Unconsciously, you're going to duplicate that. So we are breaking the curses just by learning this industry and knowing what the benefits are. So that our children, we can start that process of uh, having financial literacy as something that's very important. And we instill that in our children and it, and it, you know, it helps them down the line see that example. So they don't have that same mentality. They know that it's important to make sure that they pay into their policy, um, even though the types of policies that we have for our children are setting them up so that they can have a nest egg. They don't know it, but we are instilling in them that it's very important to have by being that example ourselves. So it's just lack of um lack of knowledge in mm -hmm. our community. And then it's passed down generation by generation because 
our children follow our financial habits, good or bad. That's true. Yeah. And I don't even think it's just the life insurance industry itself. I think we've honestly been conditioned and trained as a community to dislike our own people, to not trust our own people. So with that being said, everybody think everything is a scam. Everybody's trying to get folks and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But anywho, back to the topic, because I'll definitely go offhand. So it says um, building the savings for net worth or emergency investments, like nearly most African-American people. So based on statistics, 75 percent of black people don't have a three month savings. 75%. A lot of people use insurance as a savings account, depending on the type of insurance tool that they're using or any emergency expenses. So that's scary within itself. So, you know, three out of four people basically have no savings. If they lose their job or anything happens, then they're up the creek without a paddle, which is leaving us to depend on the government to take care of ourselves and children and so on and so forth. Um, stock market, like I said, that's another way to build generational worth. Wealth, we need to learn how to utilize the stock market. That's something that isn't being taught. I did do a class on investing not too long ago. Um, you can look at guys to check that out. And then real estate as well. My thing with real estate, Sharita, is um, I know you have property um, yourself. And it is very, um, real estate definitely is booming no matter what time, whether the market is up or high. But it takes funds to get into real estate. Uh, minus the Airbnb industry, which is a little bit tricky. How do you think we can get into real estate to um, build that generational wealth? Um, first, you have to know what options are out there. Um, for example, <clears throat> um, when like a good 10 to 15 years ago, before I even decided to have kids, um, I knew that real estate was one of those wealth building tools. So um, we would look into ways to get property, whether it was a uh, tax sale houses, whether it was homes that were in foreclosure that you can auction on, whether it was a conventional way in getting into real estate, you know, we're getting a mortgage. Um, we like I educated myself um, mm -hmm. just a little bit and was able to attain um, a few properties that actually have been able to help me through some financial obstacles since then. So I don't have all the properties that I once had, but mm -hmm. I also didn't have to go into debt trying to borrow money. I also did not have to downgrade my lifestyle to, um, you know, because, you know, I needed some extra funds. So you're able to leverage like um, real estate if you need to and liquidate it when necessary. That's a whole blessing in itself. But just knowing what options are out there to enter into the real estate industry is awesome. So if you don't have someone in your circle, immediate circle, um, that is knowledgeable, go find that person and, and just you know, teach yourself. Like a lot of things are self-taught. Teach yourself what options are out there. Um, I've been able to connect with um, several types of people in the real estate industry, from people that invested in properties to people that were wholesalers to people that were actually just real estate agents and knowing where to look because I knew those people helped me out some. And then we know that you have to have that capital, right? To even <laughs> buy the properties when you find them. So having, um, you know, already having extra income, you know, put to the side for that money. So that's on my list. So that's one of the ways to build generational wealth is by having multiple streams of income. Like I was saying earlier, I never looked into having multiple streams of income. My only um, side hustle, quote unquote, as they call them, was, you know, the credit industry. And it's because I was doing it for free. It's something I love to do. And I said, you know what, why not get paid? for something that I'm already doing, you know, which makes sense. So for those that are, you know, on the live, if you're interested, if you want to come up with a side hustle, just think about something that you would do for free, something that you have a passion about, something that you like doing and find a way to benefit from that or monetize that financially, because that's definitely um, when I was researching, one of the ways to build generational wealth is by having several streams of income. Like they state, most millionaires have at least seven LLCs. So trust and believe those are different businesses, different types of entities. So you don't have to stick 
to one market, that one market can make you various types of income. As you see with what we're doing right now, we're both um, our tax professionals. We're both in the insurance industry. It's still financial, but we're still in the same you know, financial industry, but it's different avenues and different ways to make additional income in that same industry. So I think that's a good idea. Um, one of the ways is stated is invest in your children's education. Sharita, you kind of touched on that. Um, invest in your children's education, especially when it comes to financial literacy, literacy, that's one of the ways to build generational wealth as well. What do you feel as parents we can do to invest in that aspect of it from home? Because we can't bank on them teaching our children, unfortunately. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> um, one of the things that I, I instill in my children is that um, <laughs> It's not absolutely positively that you have to go to college. First off, it's a choice. Now, that's something that you decide. I'm getting too loud, my baby. <laughs> I'm just joking. Go ahead. That, that, that's me and my household. No, I feel the because... same way. I used to be the other way. I feel the same way now. I used to press it because that's what I was pressed to do. Mm -hmm. Now I have three degrees and I don't use not one of the degrees. And I owe over 200000 in student loan debt. So... At first, I was pressing and pressing my son to get a degree and go to school. And he's mm -hmm. like, what? I can make money by getting a trade. And I was like, no, but because I was brainwashed. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. That was just yeah. joking. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, so I let them know that that's an option for you. Here's another option. Entrepreneurship is definitely an option that they're seeing real time with both parents in the home um, with with the type of industry that we are in, there are several like options that are available to someone if they want to set aside some funds for college. I highly recommend putting your uh, a particular type of policy that puts away funds that don't have to necessarily be designated for college. Now you have some states that have the MO, uh, I'm sorry, the, the 529 plans for you to put money into, but they have to specifically be used for college. Otherwise, like that money I raised too are specifically for college. I have a, yeah. a Coverdale for my daughter, yes. Mm -hmm. And if your daughter decides not to go to college, if what you happens to that? If yes. you it out, if, if it's you... not utilized. And a lot of people don't know mm -hmm. that. The only yep. reason I knew it because I worked in banking and I used banking to you know, fund my college education. Mm-hmm. So definitely having something where you can get those those funds put to the side just in case they decide to go, but they don't necessarily have to go and those funds can be used for otherwise and you're not penalized for it. That's what I recommend. So it's an option in my household. It's not a requirement. Um, and I'm like you. I have a degree that I don't I never use because the housing market crashed right after I got out of college. What was your degree in? I didn't know oh, you had a degree. Probably. You probably. learn something new every day. <laughs> would never know. I was like gun ho on being an architect. So I oh. learned engineer. <laughs> I had, so I only have, I only have an associate's degree, you guys. It was in computer aided drafting, which I was going to continue on to do um, mechanical or civil engineering. Mm -hmm. I could draw a blueprint of anything. That's that you why you like photography. So I was trying to figure out like, how is this correlated <laughs> with the financial yeah. industry? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, right. that's my advice on that. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Um, so we already touched on the different streams of income. Uh, using tax laws to your advantage, that also helps uh, build generational wealth. Um, and one way to use tax laws is once again, getting a side hustle. You know, the way the tax system is set up, it's not set up for W-2 employees. Like, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I had no knowledge of it, but it's basically set up for them to take all the money and taxes from W-2 people. But if you're self-employed, you pay your taxes at the end you pay your taxes so if you have a home-based business you get to write off a portion of your mortgage a portion of your rent utilities um, any educational expenses that's towards whatever you're doing uh, so on and so forth so if you know tax law and you know how to take advantage of it that extra money that you're not paying in taxes could be used as well to um, build generational wealth um, 
It says, yeah, put, uh, Kayla, so over time, if you really look at that money that's saved, mm -hmm. that's money that could be going towards one of your other endeavors, maybe money, more money going into investing, more money put to the side for real estate purchase, more money put aside into your life insurance policy that's set up for your retirement. Um, those are the top three ways. Mm -hmm. But you have to be basically um, your mindset has to be there. Yeah, that's the thing. Sure. You know, because back in the day, you know, when I had dependents, that's slim to none now, but um, I had dependents and I was getting those six thousand, seven thousand, eight thousand dollar tax refunds. I'm thinking, yeah, that that's extra money. You're yep. not knowing you're getting this money because the government is saying, hey, you don't make enough money to survive off of. You only been making ten, twelve, thirteen thousand dollars a year. So this is what we're giving you. And of course. Like most black people, well, I can speak for myself. You go get a car, a TV, some furniture, you splurge, and then the money gone and you're struggling the rest of the year. Well, like you said, you could take that same money that you're getting, even if it's an extra three or four thousand, and put it into one of your policies that help build more money that might be attached to the stock market in some type of way, or put it in an investment account that helps you build more money. But you know, you gotta know that you can't touch this money no time soon so if your mindset not there they not gonna do it so it's like we're trying to create a space here to help people get there and that's mm -hmm. why we're here tonight and every other you know i mean every it's supposed to be every thursday night y'all forgive me but <laughs> that's why we're here to basically create that space so that way if you need help or you have questions you have somebody to go to i know i personally didn't um did you have anybody that you can go to as far as financial literacy no, like my mama called me. Like, I'm just busy. <laughs> my mama called me. I'm everybody like, called me. I'm my young LeBez that slash yeah Mormon slash you become, I don't you know, become I don't that know. person. You know, yeah. you become that person, and I'm all for it because we need at least one in each family. Um, just somebody that they can bounce ideas off of, someone that's knowledgeable to what options are out there. Because when you don't know, you really don't do better. That's <laughs> you true. know, um, one of the things, and I don't want to make it seem like home ownership is just so attainable, even though that's the number one way to um, gain generational wealth. Um, that we have to deal with is barriers when it comes to lending as African American people, as Black people is um, redlining when, you know, basically what that is, is if you're applying for home loans, like they discriminate against us. They used to call it redlining back in the day because they used to have like a certain area where they would only let black people get mortgages in this part of town or that part of town. And don't think for a second that it's still not happening. If you go into any urban city, whether it's Vegas, Chicago, Atlanta, you're going to notice what's called concentric zoning, where they're moving all of us out from the downtown area because that's where it's real estate is prime property. They moving us all out, giving everybody these Section 8 vouchers to move to the suburbs. So black people looking like, oh, we moving on up like the Jeffersons, where we getting played the whole time like the whole time. So we still need to make sure that we're doing everything we can do to make sure we can find a way to get those loans, like credit being up to par, like you said, savings, using tax advantage breaks, life insurance is some, I'm pretty sure there's some type of tools you can use to get funds out of your policy if it's for a first time home buyer's credit. I know it is for 401ks. I'm pretty sure it's a way um, for life insurance. I haven't got that excelled in insurance as of yet, but I'm pretty sure there's always a way around these things. Mm -hmm. um, and having a bad credit score, like I said, that alone can keep you from building generational wealth because you need to leverage other people's money. Mm -hmm. And it's expensive as hell. Yes. You don't think about how much money, like you get the same Dodge Charger. No, not even like getting charges no more. They're getting challengers and your interest rate like 29.99% but somebody else get it at an interest rate of 0.5 because their credit score is 780. So you're paying 600 a month and that person is paying 300 a month for the same vehicle just because of your credit score. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's but crazy. what they do is get them the price. Oh, you can walk out the door for $500 and you're like, oh, I could afford that, but you're not looking, hang on that. You're not looking at um, the long run. Long term, yeah, you done bought that car twice. You don't yeah, even know so the interest is compound, so you're paying an extra $30, 40 a day for somebody else who's paying like an extra $2 a day. Mm 
Uh, I think I went over all my points I had on generational, building generational wealth. Is there anything else you wanted to add to it? Um, I say have, um, like I said, if you don't have someone in your circle, um, be intentional about getting someone in your circle. Um, if you are already knowledgeable, start exercising and um, putting what your financial goals are together. Just by you exercising those options, you're being that example, which actually um, breaks the cycle. You know, um, even us as millennials, we are, you know, um, <laughs> privy to the bad financial habits of our <laughs> parents, but we don't want that for our children. So mindset is so very important. Um, just knowing that you can make that, you can be that one person in your family that makes that change and it starts a domino effect to everyone else. So if you are someone that, you know, thinks about it a little bit more than a typical person, go pick up a book, go look on YouTube, go look on the internet, Find someone that you can put into your circle so that you can have certain ans uh, you know, answers to questions that you may have. And then that's going to help you do better and then be that example that we all should have had, but we didn't. You know, so we're becoming that that example and uh, we're doing our part with making sure this next generation doesn't have bad financial habits. You know, we just want to see everyone do well. We don't want to be struggling. We don't want to see anyone else struggle because so long, for so long, struggling was like, I thought it was a requirement. I thought it was and a really, Like, <laughs> okay, everybody right. struggle. Everybody get food stamps. Everybody got, you know, so you right. think that that's the normal life to live. It's not. Um, it's not so much more out here for us, y'all. No, definitely. And um, before you go, can you let everybody know exactly what all you do um, at Designer Life? I know you gave us like the name of the company, but what all services do you provide and how can people reach out to you if need be? So uh, at Designer Design Life, we are a full service financial um, agency. We assist with um, all types of life insurance, including permanent term, those with living benefits and long term care options. Um, we also assist with annuities, 401k rollovers, debt consolidation. We also pro, uh, prepare taxes for both individuals and small businesses. And then we also assist with funding for business businesses that are set up uh, structurally correctly, I'll say that, um, to assist with funds to scale and grow your business. And we assist with um, business formation as well. So if you're looking to start a business, um, design your life can assist you with that. And then put products and services in place for yourself so that you can scale and grow and also protect the income that you're creating from that business as well. I'm you can reach it. me uh -huh. at, <laughs> on uh, on um, Instagram under Design Your Life. That's Design Your, so it's D E S I G N U R Life. Um, I'm also I also have a Facebook uh, business page. It's Design Your Life as well. Um, my tax business, which is separate but incorporated under this umbrella, um, is Taxes by Diva. And you can find me on Instagram and Facebook through um, through those handles. And then my website is taxesbydiva.com. Okay. I like how it just rolled off your tongue. Okay. Let me know your audio logo. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. And um, while we're still on here, if anybody has any questions, um, please uh, let us know in the comments before we go because we definitely want to be a service to you. You know, like I said, the reason I created Nala Solution, it kind of happened by chance. God said to me, this is what you're going to do. You may not want to do it, but this is what I intend on you to, you know, this is what I want for you. And that's it. And that's all. So you have no choice but to do it. So of course, myself, you know, starting with credit repair, that was my passion and I still love credit. But now knowing, like I said, learning tax law, the different tax advantages, how to structure your business, which is a pet peeve of mine. Oh my goodness. I hate when people come to me and they just like, I just need you to do my taxes and they have nothing together. I'm like, so you trying to go to jail and send me to jail with you? No, we're going to have to work something out. So um, definitely into business structure as well. 
uh, when it comes to taxes, even to the extent of S corps, corporations, nonprofits, we can definitely um, assist you with that as well too in the life insurance industry, which I'm starting to actually like. Sharita knows like pulling teeth with me. I'm like, this is driving me crazy. But the more I learn about the life insurance industry, I'm very grateful and thankful um, that you know, even when I have random questions, I still come to you because I feel comfortable in your experience, in your knowledge, in life insurance. And I know you would definitely not lead me in the wrong way. You know, the, like I said, the whole purpose of this group is for us to have people that look like us, sound like us, um, talk like us, that we feel comfortable to come to and not feel embarrassed. Like, I don't know who I can talk to. I don't know who I can come to with these questions mm -hmm. and not send people off as they call it, you know, just cause people send you off fast, right to the feds, right to wherever you live, they're going to send you to that jail. You know, <laughs> they don't have a problem sending you off as long as the money is right. And we're, and we're in the position because of what we learn to help people not be in that situation. So you have no excuse. No mm -hmm. excuse to um, be in that situation and that circumstances when you have people like myself and Ms. Sharita here able to assist you in any, you know, anything that you have pertaining to financial literacy. Yeah. Um, I didn't see any questions on here. Uh, let me see. Hey, Mona. Hey, Janika. Charmaine. I got some cousins in Mississippi on here. Hey, Rolanda, Virginia, but I didn't see any questions per se, but um, definitely happy that you were able to hop on tonight. I really, really appreciate you. And I thank you guys as well for um, spending Thursday night with us, um, whether you're Pacific time zone, um, Eastern, I just definitely appreciate your time because you could have been anywhere, but you did choose to come here tonight. And I definitely like that. But yes, um, as Ms. Sherry Summers Bell stated, knowledge is power once applied. I'm actually um, reading a book right now called The Secrets of a Millionaire. And I'm only in chapter one and I'm blown back. And everything is basically saying nothing is done by you physically. And my mentor told me that everything, like 80% of everything you do starts in your mind. If you believe it, you're going to achieve it. And I know it sounds cliche, but it's the absolute truth. You believe something so much till it becomes an emotion. Once that emotion evokes, then it actually comes to pass. And I've seen it happen so many times in my life. I've seen it happen in other people's life. So if you're passionate about something, find that you know, use that as a way to come up with a second stream of income so we can build that generational wealth for our community because, you know, your children need you and your grandchildren and children's children that you, you may not never meet, but that's still your bloodline. We want to make sure that we're putting ourselves in position compared to other ethnicities that we're going to be on top. All right, so I think that is it. Thank you again, Sharita, so much. You are so very welcome. It was my All right. pleasure. All right, you got to definitely come back. I think the energy is working good. <laughs> Whenever you need me, sis, I'm here. All right, you guys have a good night. All right, good night.